made of whatever, you know, which was just brilliant. You know, I just thought, wow, that's really interesting. So you always assume that they, I mean, we know the, the, the so-called hunter gatherer thing, they, they ate a little bit of meat, but you thought the rest of the time, they're probably eating berries and roots and all the rest of it and vegetables and stuff that they can pick. And uh, they said, no, they couldn't have done that. They had to have had a lot of meat to be able to develop this quickly as they did. Yeah, I've got a book from the library called Sapiens. Yeah. It's a really good book. Right. Very good. Yeah. And it, it talks I might come about, and borrow that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I've got it from the library, so you'll have to get it from, not our library. Oh, not our library. No. The, the oh, library. I think you should put it in our what library. What the hell is going on? <laughs> well, did you want to join in, Carl? <laughs> what? Did you want to join in? Oh, my God, I can't handle this. I want to talk about how language started. Are we doing? You can that talk tonight? about whatever you like. Why don't we talk about anything? Oh, okay. Can we talk about how language started, though? Oh, interesting. Do, do, do you know? Do you know? Do you know one thing I would say about this? About these various different hominids, which are mm. which which we've said there are quite a lot of them mm. anyway. Mm. Um, the thing is. The thing is, when you look at modern humans, uh, we don't we get keep getting told that we only use a certain amount of our brain. Yes, allegedly ten percent, but yeah. Well, if that's the case, if that's the case, we can be highly intelligent having a small brain. Ooh, interesting concept. Yeah. Well, you know that that that's that's just. Dinosaurs that's, did quite well with small brains, didn't they? Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Look! Look at look at my look at my Baldrick. He's 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 got he's he's a he's a big animal. Um, mm. he, he he knows his name. Um, he he he, he um. He he knows sure he knows his name. Yeah, he shout <laughs> Baldrick. Of course he does. It's the tone of voice I find. Uh, no, right. it, no, no. Actually, uh, different people call it can call him Baldrick, and he'll come. And uh, mm. yeah. I it's bet interesting. If you call huh? Nelly in the same tone of voice, it still respond. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Whales are interesting like that because you've got dolphins with massive brains. Yeah, um, you, you could talk, talk about dolphins a minute while I go and guess something. Yeah, and, but and but some of the whales, which are obviously much bigger, have smaller brains. Yeah, which is, which is really interesting. So because you think, oh, the bigger the brain and all the rest of it, but no, it doesn't necessarily follow. Mm. Mm. And fish, from my remember from my early biology days at school, dissecting a fish, mm. tiny brains. Yeah, and well, yet they can navigate that, across the Atlantic. Be muted. No, you're not, Anne. I can hear you. You can hear me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, I'm having trouble. The thing is telling me I'm muted. It's, no, it's, it's um, lying to you. Okay. I was, just, I was just going through tests to try and find out what that really was. Ah, well, you just come on now. We didn't hear you before, but you just literally come on now. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Your pitch is very good, and so is Dreamers. Nice plant behind you there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a basil, just one of these. Uh, Hello, basil. Yeah. You kind of colour coordinated with your top. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, are you not yeah. wearing trousers? I've told you about that. Please. <laughs> no, I'm not wearing trousers. <laughs> I always want to say to Carl, I don't know if you ever saw that Victoria Wood sketch. I, mean, I, I didn't where she has a boyfriend. She has a boyfriend called Carl. And <laughs> he says, what? Carl, what's your favourite sandwich? <laughs> yes. Don't you I remember that? it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't no. know. I like ham <laughs> and I like cheese. What's going on? <laughs> Just may, uh, may I remind you, Carl, that you are live on YouTube. Oh, yes, so. yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. meanwhile, back at the archaeology. Yeah, this Amanda woman that you're talking about. Um, yes. I, 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 I think I've had loads of conversations with her. Which she was going to come along at one point. Amanda Weston, she's called. Yeah. Yeah, she lives, she, what, she lives past the, um, is that the same one that lives past the uh, Institute? No, no, she just lives literally around the corner, between halfway between um, Margaret and mine uh, on our estate. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think, I I think, think she's, she's more interested in thinking actually practical archaeology at the moment, So because that's what she was talking to me about before. She said she would like to join a group. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but she, she doesn't do it, though, does she? She said that twice to me as well. You think, well, join then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, she keeps saying, because she's fairly new to the area, she wants, she needs to make friends with people. Ah, right. Well, well if she's new to the area, it's not the same with Mandro. Yeah, I think well, I when I say new, new, she's been here for about four years, I think. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. She's still an off-comer, though, isn't she? I think yeah. she would come along if we were together in a group like we used to. Yes, be. I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. <clears throat> she wasn't keen on the Zoom thing. Ah, yeah, it could be that, yeah. Right, I think we'll get started. Okay. What we're we doing tonight, then, Carl? I've forgotten. I've no idea. What I wanted oh, to do. Oh no. To, what I, what, I, what I wanted to do. I wanted to start off with the pendant. Yeah. And I wanted to go on to Staffin Island. But we do have oh. a bit of a problem with the technology today, uh, because I'm uh, right. For some reason, because I'm um, a fellow of. Uh, the Scottish Institute of, of um, uh, Antiquaries, right? Mm -hmm. um, it recognised that I've got access to their database on my one on, on my one device, right? Mm -hmm. So when I've come to go onto this device, I can't get access to the same stuff. So uh, it's got brilliant images here, but I can't I can't translate them over. I think I think is a data protection thing, so I can I can read out what I've got. Um, anyway, with Staffing Island, and I wanted to just basically mention some stuff about Shetland, um, and I wanted to mention about Orkney, and I didn't want to go as long as we did last week. What was it until twenty past ten? No, yeah, it wasn't that late. Uh, no. Yes, it was. It was. It was twenty past ten. Are you sure? No. Oh, I'm gonna look at my diary, right, and then we will see, right. Oh, if, if it means ten to eight now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we did. We did from seven forty-one, um, and sometime past ten. Sometime past ten. <laughs> I love your accuracy. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, De Matt, Andy. Any news from you this week? Uh, no, other than what I was saying before, just watching that program about it, which was just fascinating. You know me, I, I because of the uh, the DNA analysis, there's just so much more information coming out now. It's just brilliant. So, and what they can learn from it as well. Even the uh, the, the the fossilized remains, they were looking at bite marks in it, and the argument was very simple that they were because there was this argument that said that they were um, that hu early humanoids just picked up on scavenging on lion kills and all the rest of yeah, it. And they said yeah. no, they didn't because there was nothing left on those at all. And they went to a site of a lion kill and they said, look, there you go, there's bones. This is um, whatever it was. I can't remember what it was. doesn't matter. But um, they said, um, you know, there, there is no, nothing left on it. He said, so how, how could anybody scavenge? She said, there's absolutely nothing left. There were just some bits of bone that had even been, all the marrow had gone even, they'd broken oh. the bones up, you know. And, uh, and he said, so they couldn't possibly have done this because there's nothing left. So I thought well, it, yeah. said, it said in my Sapiens book that they they foraged for the marrow in the bones. That yeah, was what they did. Well, that that that's apparently the, that was the argument they were saying. This is this but, it's really interesting <clears throat> how they're changing it all and looking at the fossilized remains. It would suggest the same as well. So because um, the the thing is, there would have been a lot more uh, fauna about back then. There'd have been yeah. a lot more animals. Yeah. So and there was a lot more trees. There yeah, that was the argument that was um, that was that, that yeah. therefore they were organised and hunting and, and therefore had weapons, mm. um, but not, not necessarily stone, but um, but um, that they were and, and, and successful because if they didn't, they had to be successful. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So, mm. and Andy, can I can I chuck something in a mix that nobody sure. ever discusses? The, the, we've never. We, I know we've never mentioned this before ever. What about hominids working together with other hominids? Yeah. Other hominid types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure now, they we, do. We, oh, we, yeah. we always talk we all we always talk about oh there, there's a there's a really nice looking Neanderthal red headed woman over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we always and, and and this is um a Denisovian and he's yeah. really attractive. So they meet and they have children, right? Yeah. And then then their offspring <clears> is um, <throat> Homo sapien and whatever. Right. Mm. We always talk about it that way, but we don't actually talk about general cooperation. 
So if we, yeah. if we want to if, if if we want to sanitize this and make it um, operable, and I think this is acceptable. I'm not, I'm really not sure, but uh, it, it's 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 the same as people arguing that oh a Japanese person shouldn't work with somebody in America to do something, mm -hmm. and an Aboriginal shouldn't mm -hmm. get into that mix. Um, they certainly shouldn't work together, right? Yeah. Well, they do. Yeah. Well, you think they, about it. Yeah, they, if they're, they if they're hunting and one lot's better than the other lot, they're going to work together, aren't they? Because they're going to get more food. So they're not oh, stupid. Exactly. They're not stupid by any means. I'm, well, sure they, I'm sure they did. I'm sure you're absolutely right, yeah. How, but nobody ever, nobody ever talks about that, do they? They just don't talk about it. And that's how they then interbred, didn't they? Because they have, they'd have the, the joint meal afterwards and get, get on together and start doing things they shouldn't have been doing. But they lived in such small groups, didn't they, initially? And they, oh, that's what we're, uh, we on, don't, that's what we're we don't told. know. Yeah, we don't well, know exactly. Smallish groups up to about twenty. Do you think? Yeah, but this is what this is what I say, and this is the thing. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at Mother Nature, as Andy's been just offered his dinner. Thank you for that, lovely. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Um, I would say this, right? If if we want to, if we want to look at, if if we want to um, contradict something that I say. And the same thing is said in books that we had groups of 15 to 20 people, right? Well, how do you explain you get massive herds of elephants that are huge beasts? There's hundreds of them, right? <laughs> um, well, they, they, they can survive, yeah. right? You, you can get thousands of wildebeests. I was just going to say the wildebeest. That... They survive, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what, so what about having 100 human beings swarming across the landscape? They could also survive. So I'm just wondering about the language because the one group would have developed sounds names for animals and for one another hey, hang, hang, hang on a minute hang, hang on a minute let me stop you there right yeah uh, what about what about people being shipwrecked on islands and cooperating with local people and they're still able to eat they're still able to do things they're still able to um, do the same music yeah, eventually yeah. they pick up words so you yeah. you need to think outside that restrictive box well i'm trying to well, I'm forcing you to, I'm my darling. To, but I'm just thinking your group would have come up with the with the uh, names for animals, your, and then you would come across another group who'd made up their names for the same well, animals. No, but it's not. So they would have had, well, it might. They might get the language might mix together because, in a sense, you've got experience even in our own country where we've had Vikings and Saxons and the French and people and the languages. Come together. But then you've got before the before we were cut off from Europe, we would have had people coming across from Europe and uh, they would have had their own language. You've you you've had an, you've answered your own question, Marcus. <laughs> you've actually answered your own question. I just think um, it's very complicated. No, but it but it's not complicated. That's what it's able to the, the thing is, the thing is, right, Peter went around the world on a boat right mm -hmm. he, he went to ports and nobody understood him right mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is Pete, peter was still able to communicate with people oh, yeah. Pete, peter was still able to wave he was still able to sing with them he was still able to drink with them you know mm -hmm. the, the, so the fact of the matter is it, it's what what you've got to do in archaeology you've got to massively rip up the textbook and you've got to think outside the box every single oh, time try. like we were doing last week yeah there there is there is you know um the, the, this is why the, this is why when you go to university they 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 say right you can you can listen to the lecture you can write down everything the lecturer says right you mm. can come up with one or two ideas the people who get the top marks are the ones who come up with novel ideas the mm. ones that, that that disagree with everything that everybody's saying and then you think I, actually they got a point exactly that's what we're saying that's what we, that's exactly what we're saying because what we did last week on a, on the pendant what we did last week on the pendant was 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 thoroughly revolutionary. If you if you watched the recording back, it, there was a lot in it, and and um, you know we, we could have gone on longer. We could we have gone good. on to eleven o'clock. We could have we easily gone good. on to eleven o'clock. We were good. So uh, we? yeah. Right, Margaret. Anything else you want to say? No, that's it, really. Thank God for that, David. <laughs> oh no, thank you. Look at David. You should be like David. He, he don't say a word. Right, Peter. We still don't know what causes the pendant to react. React. React to what? 
He's a, he's on about no, Peter. You've just said something completely out of context. You know, you yeah. know, you know, when you've got the pendant and you've got dousing and you've got, yeah, uh, the pendant and you ask questions, right? Ask questions, it will answer. Yeah, it will answer. Yeah. Oh yes, it will answer. Um, I, and I, weird, weirdly enough, oh, Peter just sent me on a bloody tangent, but. Uh, we, we had a guy called uh, Richard Harvey who used to come along my, to an excavation I used to have outside Cowbridge. Right? <clears throat> um, and, and Richard Harvey um, one day came on site and he said, "Oh right, we're gonna we're gonna do some uh, we're gonna do some dousing." Right? Anyway, I said, "Right, there's, there must have been burials here because it's part of a chapel." Right? There weren't any burials at all. We excavated the area. There weren't any burials. There was nothing there. It turned out that it wasn't a chapel in the first place, right? But because there were no energies there, he couldn't he couldn't detect any energies because it wasn't meant to be there, right? So, um, you know, th there's something behind this technology, but I don't know the how how the hell Peter's put that into this conversation. Anne, no, I have nothing to say. Thank you. Anne's a sensible one. Anne, you've been pulling your hair out. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Margaret? Some I got to tell you, not Margaret, Adrina. Adrina. Um, I watched a program about Irish archaeology and the start of it, and it was really very interesting. Arlen O'Hanlon, the comedian, oh, yeah. presented oh, it. Yeah. And it was really good. It was quite a political thing. There were two archaeologists, one based his work on Northern Ireland and found a lot of things, can't remember. And the other one was in Southern Ireland and found different things. And they were trying to make an argument for splitting Ireland into two parts. Oh, for God's sake. But it was interesting. There were sure. loads, there's loads of archaeology on it. There was loads. <laughs> yeah, well, you should have just kept with the last bit and we would have been happy. Okay. Okay. Right. Don't, don't, don't mind me, Drina. Yeah, we, we, we've all got problems in life. Yeah. No, it's just that it was a political thing. Okay, fair enough. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they're the pendant the other way around. Yeah. Now, all, 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 we're not really going to spend too long on this, right? But uh, every, every everybody's gone away, right? And um, And you've had time to think. And I, I'm going to ask you all, um, just just give me a couple of sentences of um, what you think this is, Peter. Well, it's obviously, it, it could be a record of some form of uh, what they've actually been doing with the pendant. Uh, uh, hang on a minute, stop, stop, stop. Uh, that, that's absolutely amazing, right? Because... Um, um, when we think of a record, we think about this pendant being used to record other things, right? Mm -hmm. So Pete said the pendant is to record what's been mm. done with the pendant, which is, which is completely different from actually recording something, right? So you're actually recording what the pendant's doing. Well, carry on, Pete. Well, it, um, it may be uh, counting the uh, stock and uh, rather than going out and physically counting it all, he can tell you that yes, we've got we've got eight cows and three sheep. <clears throat> I, I, actually, Pete, I thought I, I no, I thought you meant something else. I, I, well, I it's thought a record you actually... of, what, of what you've got and what you've had. No, I thought no, Pete, no, I I oh. was I was defining something different. I was Ouch. defining, yeah, I was defining the journey of the pendant. Right. Okay. Sorry. Yes. I, I thought I thought you'd gone into what the pendant's telling you. What 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 the pendant's discovered. I thought that's what you meant. Well, it might that might well be. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So that that that's two different points of view in yeah, one. Okay, sorry. Yes. No, don't apologise. We, we managed to get it out there. Anything else, Pete? No. <laughs> Just the, the pendant. So I get, like I said, you know, even with that one of mine, it, they they certainly had significance. Yeah, and with yeah. the person who actually used it, yeah, some people that got the got the real response from them. Some people didn't. Yeah. 
and exactly the response is what you were calling us for. So, but but yep. you've got you, you, what, what I what I'm not actually arguing with you. I'm actually agreeing with you. I'm actually saying you could actually you could actually look at it in two different ways. There, you could say right, it's actually being used to record other things, and actually the journey of the pendant. So, um, yeah. uh, and, and the other thing as well is whatever you guys say, right? It could mean all of these things, David. I think I frightened David off. <laughs> David, don't want to say anything. It could be uh, recording uh, the stock, the animals, and so on. Which is sim which is basically what uh, Pete was saying. Yes, and yeah. and yeah. but 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 again, yes. What, what, um, that that's that's a very obvious one. Thanks for that, David. Um, Anne. I think it. It, 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 because it lasted a long time, oh. I think it could be something that had a meaning which was sort of precious to the tribe or precious to individuals. It may have been something held by somebody very senior in the tribe, which he would pass on his authority with this, that, that kind of thing, and the, the next person had to know its meaning, or I don't know, it could have been the whole group. But I think similar to the speaker stone. Yeah, it, it's just I'm just so fascinated that something of that age would have had some meaning put into it, you know, like early um, writing or something. And uh, having done that, I mean, we we if you think even now we use writing for all sorts of different purposes, but the person receiving it has to understand the meaning. So it may have been something that was passed through the generations to remember that meaning, whatever it was. So this is obviously much earlier, but the Vikings had what was known as the thing. And the speaker at the thing held the speaker's yes. stone. Yes. And the speaker stone was passed to a other. If someone else had something to say, the speaker, they couldn't say it until the speaker's stone had passed to them yes. and they were held, holding it. So That's right. So then, then it would be used through the community, wouldn't it? That yeah. They'd all be using it rather than yeah. it was something precious kept to just somebody superior in the or considered superior in the group. Uh, I just think it's a very fascinating thing oh, um, yes. because, because, as I say, because it's, it's got this, which must have had meaning, and that meaning had got if it was used for over a long time. That meaning remained and was understood through time. One would imagine. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, you what I'm going to say is that. Well, then again, that could have been for a long time, and probably the, the meaning may have been lost, and it was used for something else. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm going to go with both of them, and I'm also going to. Um, Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck a really weird concept at all of you, right? Um, um somebody gets a Victoria Cross at Islam Dawana, right? Um, and um they get this, they get this, they 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 get the Victoria Cross at Islam Dawana, right? It's just a cross, it's a it it it's it's a medal, yeah, and, and it's um it, it's it's indicative of an award. That is associated with somebody that fought at uh, Rourke's Drift, for example. Now, <clears throat> could that not be the same as something like this? Um, and and what I'm talking about is that um, you, you you're given this. I I, I, I underneath that it's going to say Rourke's Drift, right? And 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 it's going to it's going to be uh, the Victoria Cross. Um, and you're given as a token of achievement, a medal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now. Right. Okay. Keep that there. Hold that there. Hold it. Um, right. So you've got this. You've got this. Um, you've got this medal, right? Victoria Cross. Now, we know about the story about Rorkstrift, right? But you, you, somebody's wearing the medal and they don't know about the story about Rorkstrift, right? It's almost as if um, it's imbued with meaning that they need to know what the what that medal means, right? It's like a German winning an Iron Cross in the first uh, world war first or second class it meant everything right if you um if you're a prussian landowner and you'd won um uh, you you'd won a um um you won a, you'd won an iron cross in battle right in the first or the second world war it was it was a true honor right 
So, um, but what I'm trying to say is that um, you're expected to know what these things mean, right? And, and in many ways, maybe we're expected to know what this means. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So it could be showing deaths, maybe people. No, 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 that's not die. what I said. I'm, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I, I meant. A commemorative but, medal. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I'm trying to say there? Mm. Uh, but not as it. I'm not saying this is as a commemorative medal, but what we do have is artifacts in the in the past. So say say for example, I could sit down and tell you about the Bayer Tapestry without reading anything about it, right? But some people wouldn't have a first clue what the Bayer Tapestry was about, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, and it's it's like sometimes we get we get very special things like this object, um, and and they've got more meaning than than we could ever believe we could ever think. Um, and it's almost as if you could be holding this thing and you'd know the story without even looking at it. Mm. And that's exactly what I'm saying about winning a, a Victoria Cross. Um, it, it, it's a story. It, it's, it's, it's an epitaph. It, it's, it's, um, it's got great meaning. Anyway, I just thought, I thought, yeah, I thought I'd put that in there. And that goes back to what we're, we're saying. Right, Andy, anything I can say? This is, this is going on longer than I thought. Andy. Well... It's an interesting artifact, isn't it? In that it clearly yes. is very important because it's been passed over to you know, various generations. It has been very carefully carved mm. uh, and been added to. So that's something that's accumulated over time. So I wondered whether it, it was actually a record of the tribe and their families, and family groups. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think right, okay. they, was it? A, do you think it would have been a very male dominant? dominant kind of society or would no no, it no, just, no 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 reason no, to no. believe that no. i was just yeah, wondering no 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 reason to believe that at all in fact in fact what i'm going to say is this um um you, you you've actually just taken us down another avenue right which we're going to do in a moment right it's it's it we're going to link this in with avery right um and the reason why me, both andy and i have shot you down margaret is because oh. No, 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 I'm going to use it in those words. I'm going to use it in those words because when you think about women's football, right? Mm. Women's football was massive and attended by more people than attended male football in the early 1920s, right? Mm. And then it was banned by, by, the, um, by the male dominated football association, yeah. right? Now, the point is, is that women's football was more popular than men's football, right? Hmm. Uh, um, and it's difficult to understand that now, but it was, right? There, there, there were the biggest gates for um, football attendances were first met by women's attendances, not men's, hmm. right? And and the point is, the point is, I'm getting at is that um, we, we and then then we, then we look now and we think, oh, uh, the women actually won, um, uh, beat Germany. I was actually, I was actually egging for Germany to beat the English, but that was something else. Um, but and so was Pete. Pete wanted the Germans to beat the English as well. But anyway, the point is, um, the point is, is that it's almost as if we picked up something that was already Ooh. happening a hundred years ago, mm. right? It's just what we've done is come full. That I'm going to say it. There's nothing special in women playing football, right? Because they were already doing it years ago. It's just what was happening. There's nothing special about it at all. Women, women do football. Men do football. There's nothing special about men doing football. There's nothing special about women doing football, right? Because, because we do it. And that's the point. And this is with this object. We did it. It's there. Uh, um, and not, not to disagree with what you said, Margaret, but to obviously strike us there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually... Um, oh, boy. I, I, I'm going on a tangent, deliberate, because this is this is what this is what we should be doing more of tangents. Can tangents I just ask are something though. What's that? You you talk while I get this image. Well, they wouldn't have, have monogamous relationships. I take it. The, How do you know? Uh, well, I don't know, but I'm thinking maybe the women had children by a few different men. Was it maybe a tally of who had which children? Ooh, did they yeah. know? Did the men know which children were theirs? Uh, I, I I like that idea, but you know how complicated that is in nature. 
Yeah, very. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, I, what I'm, what I'm going to get at, what I'm going to get at, what I witness, what I witness myself, uh, is that um, I, I, I've got, I've got chickens and I've got ducks, right? Now, um, earlier on, uh, I've got um, a white cockerel and a white chicken, right? And there's a, a brown cockerel. Well, the brown cockerel wanted to mate with a, a white white chicken, but the white chicken was the brown cockerel's hen, right? And they fought over it, and it didn't happen, right? Um, it, it was the white cockerel's <laughs> hen. Well, the, the fact of the matter is, right, that happens on low levels, and, and obviously, obviously, we go out there, right? Crows mate for life, right? Uh, blackbirds mate for life, right? So why can't human beings? So do swans, yeah. yeah. So, so Margaret, you keep shooting yourself in the foot. Well, I don't know. I think they probably would have uh, spread themselves around a bit. I think they would have had children by various different men, myself. But has the human well, race and has has the human race changed? Because it uh, certainly they they mix all over the place now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, but 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 no, but why wouldn't have happened there or top men? Ma Margaret, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say, right? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say no. There are some people, there were some animals, and there are some people that would like to stick with one person. Possibly, yeah. No, no, no. We're not going to do possibly. We're going to say yes because in modern day society. There's men and women who like the like to sleep around, and there's men and women who like to stay with yeah. one partner. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna say both of the Margaret. We're gonna say keep keep doing this, Margaret. We're gonna um, because we're gonna uh, we we've, we've got we've got what I'm what we're getting at is that everything's working. We need to keep looking at everything working and not looking at a timetable of results. Mm. Uh, which timetables of results just don't give you the the answers, right? What I wanted to do is I wanted to chuck in Avebury quickly. Um, a Avebury itself, we're, we're we're in the Neolithic period, we're five thousand five hundred years ago, um, and at Avebury, uh, we used to think that there are ninety that there are ninety sockets in the ground that held stones around the outer circle, right? But in some of those sockets, there's nothing, right? There's no evidence that in those holes in the ground there was ever a stone, right? But you see reconstructions of stones being in those sockets, right? And there's a point to this which directly links us back to the pendant, right? And um, what I'm getting at is that um, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm actually getting at is that I believe that each of those sockets would have represented a family, right? And because there's no stone being placed in those sockets, it means that it was never used, right? That's my assumption. But when you think about Stonehenge and you think about stones moving around and th there's this and there's that, and you know these, these types of theories where st um, this big thing being moved from over there to over here and all the rest of it, what, what gives people a mindset to do that? And also, quickly before we go back to the pendant, I, went to, I, I made a video the other day of, of a church called Slan Wen Arth. Right. The reason why I remember it, because slan means place or area or religious site. Uh, when means white and arth means bear or Arthur. Right. Anyway, so it's a really old name. There's a there's a there's a link to that. So as I went into a church graveyard, I looked down at the ground and the oldest gravestone was there dating to about the 1600s, used as a slab, as an entranceway through the kissing gate into the church graveyard. Right. Now that's talking about reuse, exactly the same as we're talking about this pendant. This pendant has a much bigger, a much varied history than, 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 we, than we give it credit for, right? So anyway, uh, who, who haven't we done yet? We haven't done Drina, so go for it, Drina. Um, some question, really. Is there any indication that the stone's been tied around the neck? I mean, there doesn't look like any wear around the hole. There, there, is, there is, on, yeah, there you is? are right. Yeah, you are right. On the opposite side, there is wear because it's worn against whatever it was uh, okay. brushing up against. Um, However, yeah. hang, hang on, hang on. Yeah, you are right because it doesn't look like there's wear in that hole. No. However, it doesn't mean to say that the hole wasn't wasn't worked again. It may have been a smaller hole and then it was widened. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of the outer edge of the stone. That's all. Um, it doesn't. Do you, 
Go on. Yeah, that, that doesn't look rough, does it? No. So you're right. No. But then again, then again, then again, Drina, because that looks that looks fairly fairly cleaner compared to the outside, it may have actually been reworked to make yes. the hole bigger. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing was, if you look at the palm of your hand, which is creased, you've got a line mm. right across, haven't you, that's a bit wobbly. Uh, Do you yeah. think that would be, say, the palm of the chief and the others are all family, like somebody else suggested? Mm. Um, and it, if they're going to yeah. get more children, there'll be later mm. grooves? Yes. Like, yeah. like a family tree? Yes. My God, I like it. I, I I do like this. I the the thing the thing is right. I I have um I have thought long and hard about just stopping lecturing right altogether right. And I've told you about this. You can't do that. Shut up. <laughs> I, I I I I have thought about stopping lecturing altogether. But the the problem is is if I stop lecturing altogether, we're not going to have <laughs> these discussions right. And the information that we're talking about now, which expands our minds, we're not going to be doing, right? So therefore, if I go out live, um, if, if I go out live sort of um, doing my live shows and I don't have this information, those live shows ain't going to be much good because we haven't tested things out. We haven't had discussions. So in other words, guys, you've got me for the long haul. Well, hey. <laughs> well, you have, Margaret. I'm not sure about Drina. Um, <laughs> Oh, you, you rotter. <laughs> Don't have a cross to bear. Yeah. yeah. So have we asked everybody now? Is that it? Have we done Andy and Pete, yeah? Yeah. Did we do Andy? Yep. If it wasn't right. those little notches on the long lines, it would just it would just be a design, wouldn't it? It's those yeah. little notches that mean something. Yeah. You don't suppose somebody's just scratched it for fun. No, no, no. Those no. would have been really hard to do. They were so small. And, and, yeah. and also, if it's done for fun, Drina, it would have been a fun object that was designed over a long period of time, which even makes it even more interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, one, the one thing that we came to a conclusion with on Thursday, and this is probably my last word, right? We, um, I, I, we'd done everything, and, and my lecture on Thursday was quite short, right? And the reason why it was quite short was because I, I didn't really have much time because I was going to see my daughter and and uh, but the one the one thing that we did think about which which was illuminating which I'm sure that we did on Tuesday but I got a, a recap on this the concept that the the concept that that writing if this is runic writing or a form of communication oh, yeah yeah right the concept that writing is art rather than a way of recording things <clears throat> mm. right so what i mean by what i mean by that right is that um we we've we've got a book in front of us and we read the book okay it's to the book itself and the writing in it is to give a message right it's not art right um the 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 information on this golden syrup flavor porridge pot right is not art it's meant to tell me that it's a golden syrup flavor porridge pot Right, Asda, Tesco, other brands available. Right, so um, what if writing itself is actually art? <clears throat> right. Um, in other words, in other words, what you what you offer the world is art. In other words, um, writing is writing could be said to be part of humanities, not just English literature, right? Um, and um, um, drama scripts and film scripts are classed as art, right? Because they're performed. That's exactly what I'm saying with this. Well, in other know. words, so what, what, yeah, in other words, we're broadcasting letters as art rather than broadcasting letters as a form of communication. We, and the communication is in fact the art. Yeah, uh, art, art is a communication, and I think yes. much of the, I mean, if you look at the different writings that have come in the world, they are they're sort of based on art, aren't they? The shapes are developed from yeah. patterns, and yeah, 
that's where calligraphy comes into it, particularly the Japanese calligraphy is an art. Yeah. 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 I, I, you what? can't separ separate them really, art and writing, can you? The form of writing. I don't mean the meanings of writing, but the form of writing. Yeah, but you 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 do if you do English literature, but if you do if you do writing as art, um one one th one thing one thing that my ex-wife used to do, right? She used to um um, she used to um, get bits of paper, newspaper, right? And she used to rip them up and she used to put the words on, arrange it on um, on a picture. And um, they used to get letters and they used to have different forms of letters to create art. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's however, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> however, however, there is, there is a form of communication there. And yeah, you are right. Art is communication. You're, you're very right there. And actually, we did. Actually, I think, I think we didn't do we didn't do this on Thursday morning. We actually did this on Thursday evening, uh, with my with my class that I actually look at um, the line and following the line. So there you go. So um, right. So what we are going to do now? We're gonna we're gonna go off the screen, um, and uh, right, and we're just going to uh, stop that there. What the hell was that then? Um, right. <laughs> what, what was that image of the van? Did you get that? It looked like yeah. Chris in his minibus. It was a guy in a van. Mm. It was a guy in a van. So what, what we are going to do now is, is staff in Ireland. But um, I, I'm, I'm very aware that um, the, the document... Um, it's, just, it's, just the, it's just the technology that I'm using. And um, I could actually go back to the other device and teach from there, but we'll we'll just sort of see what we've got. So I'm just going to try and type this in to see if I can get this up. Okay, images. Right, okay, we're going to do that there. Mm -hmm. Oh right, yeah, we got we know where staff in Ireland is. There's loads of images here, oh, and right. it's a place. It's a place that they found a dinosaur footprint. So um, yeah, it, 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 there's a dinosaur footprint being found on Staffan Island. Um, so what we're going to do, we will um, move over to where we're meant to be. Um, We've got lots of them. Yeah, we do. Yeah, but the, the Scots have got to have a few, Pete. We don't want to give any to the Cumbrians. They they can have human footprints instead. Right, that that there is Staffan Island, right? So it, that that big island there. Staffing Island, right? So there it is. Um, and no, it's not all that big island, is it? Oh, for God's sake, that's wrong. Um, Staffing Island is a little island, which is um, off that big archipelago, which which I'm going to type in here. What the, what's going on here? What, where the Corodo, Car right? Staffing Island. Okay, we're going to get that on the map so we can get. You know, it's part of that big chain. I got that slightly wrong. I Staffing thought Staffing Island. Island, so I was very confused for a minute. Staffing. Right, there it is. See, right. I, I said that Staffing I Uig, right? So basically it's it's part of that sort of inner Hebrides. That is Staffing Island, right? So we go in, there's Staffing Island. It's a little island. Um, there we go, Staffing, and it's there we go. Not Staffing Island, there we go. And it discusses Ancora Beach as well. So, so we've got Staffan Island, Ancora Beach. So sort of this is what we're going to be looking at today. So um, so if we sort of get a bit of get a bit of the landscape, um, and we sort of what, what is going on here? Is that big island not sky? Yeah, it was yes, it's sky. just north yeah. northwest of sky, northeast of sky, yeah, isn't right. it? Yeah. Just yeah Thank you, thank you, Andy. I just thought, you know, don't worry, Andy. It's fine. It, 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 just, just don't worry about it, Andy. It's, it's all, it's all for the good of the country. Uninhabited. Didn't I tell you the <laughs> other day? I said to somebody, um, I, 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 I said, I said to somebody, oh, um, are you winning the war? And the person turned around and said, I don't think you should have said that. The person that occupies me is Ukrainian. Yes, it was a, a slightly inappropriate, wasn't it? But... Yeah, yeah. And the guy no, down the road. Yeah, Staffing but, is is populated. It has its own stamps yeah. as well. Really? Yep. 
So this is the, this is the archaeology of Staffan Island. So mm. um, I've, I've got what I want us to do is I've got some nice little pieces I want to read read out, um, and um, and then obviously I want us to do a little bit of Shetland and Orkney by the end, right? So unfortunately, my university is uh, not my university. The uh, Scottish antiquaries are not going to allow me to uh, share the their images from their documents. Uh, but I've got that in front of me, which I'm allowed to read out. So this itself, um, 2015. Now this is quite, this is very interesting because of what this, what this article says in front of me, which is this image. Mesolithic site on sky to be investigated. So Staffing Island. Archaeologist Staffing Community Trust. Archaeologists have described the site as having huge potential. This is 2015. Excavations of a Mesolithic site on Skye could give new insights into the lives of some of the island's earliest residents. Archaeologists believe the location above Staffin Bay has the, the remains of a house that could be 8,000 years old. So we've got a Mesolithic site, a late Mesolithic site on Staffin Island, which is great. So the reason why I wanted to look at um, Orkney and um, Shetland briefly is because that we that they're islands and I just thought you know we're doing a Mesolithic period I can't I can't really do Orkney in the Neolithic and Shetland in the Neolithic without mentioning it in the Mesolithic when we come to it so there's been lots of Mesolithic fl flints have been found in an area um, along the shoreline also um, there's cattle grazing on this site and they 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 kick up the, the the mud and the turf and they they've been finding they 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 they've been finding flints so instead of moles it's the cattle doing it and um and yeah just just a little point i want to make is the reasons why you don't see lots of trees on lots of these islands is because of the, the way it's grazed it's not because trees won't grow it's because of there's sheep either grazing there or cattle or deer right and nothing will grow that's why, because they're always churning it up. So, it's all the, the site has also been investigated by the University of Highlands and Islands. Great, um, and basically, the important prehistoric occupation um, with huge potential. They're saying, despite staffing having a wealth of prehistoric remains, this is the this is the area's first archaeological excavation in twenty years. And its Mesolithic potential is intriguing and exciting. That's what they're saying. We're going to go on to the results, my friends. So during the Mesolithic period, also known um, as the Middle Stone Age, um, Scottish, uh, Scotland was inhabited by people who were, who were basically more or less able to walk back and forth to these islands because they weren't um, disconnected by the sea yet. But obviously they would eventually be disconnected um, um, by the sea. So what they're what they're looking at is later evidence uh, from the Neolithic, but they've done radiocarbon dates here and they found out that it's Mesolithic activity. And also just quickly, I mentioned um, where, where you saw that little bit of a, um, a, a, a spit of land on the map and it said Anne Corran, which is part of the island sky. And then you've got Staffin Island. Um, that's where the dinosaur footprint is. A dinosaur footprint um footprints it says dating to 165 million years ago so what i'd like to do next is also there we go so we this this is this is we we actually did cover this a little while ago but we we just briefly looked at it. hazelnut shells being found there so um what we what we are going to do now is i've got I've got this headline news. Now, what we've got, um, what we've got is Staffin Bay dig dated to Mesolithic period. So this is what we've got. These are the results. And then we've got another bigger scientific paper, which I'd have loved to have shown you in <coughs> images, but I can't. Um, I don't want to be struck off. <laughs> but anyway, um, Staffin Bay dig dated to Mesolithic period. Nuts. Now, this is this is brings it full circle. Nuts found during an archaeological excavation at Staffin, uh, where from the hunter-gatherer period 
more than over 8,000 years ago. The hazelnut shells, shells, were discovered during the five-day community-led excavation in, se in September 2015. So it was only a five-day excavation, which is, which is probably enough, really. So radiocarbon dates have now confirmed the ex excavated lithics date to the Mesolithic period. Uh, and maybe, uh, this is quite shocking, maybe it might go back to 9,000 years ago. So, wow. So that, 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 that might, that says that we've got stuff going on um, on these islands, um, which, which is really old. When I say, you know, it's, it, dates, it dates in with the island of Ronsi, which isn't too far away, um, and Colonsi, uh, where we were looking at limpet shells and all the other shells there. So some of the charred hazelnut shells, they, they dated two of them. Um, and the charred hazelnut shells date from a whopping 8,800 years ago. Again, repeat, 8,800 years ago, and they're charred. So they, they're, they're part of the human activity at the site. So they got hearths there. The hazelnuts were recovered from soil samples from the lower part of the sequence at the site, suggesting human activity may have occurred over a long period of time. So we're going to stop there a moment, and we're just going to assess this, this very thing. So the remains that you're getting, seeing in front of you are actually later remains, right? And the other remains underneath, which they're, they're looking there, are actually Mesolithic. Now we've got a problem. And what is the problem, right? We, um, in archaeology, archaeology is destructive. I don't need to remind you of that, right? So if they needed to work out what's below that later material there from the Neolithic period and later, they would need to move that or destroy the archaeology to get to the Mesolithic. Agreed? Yeah. Because you can't, you can't go below that without removing it. Agreed also. So the reason why, one of the big reasons why we don't get lots of Mesolithic stuff is because we can't get to it. Because if we want to get to it, we've got to destroy the stuff above. And that is the dichotomy, right? So <laughs> then what we need to do, we need to do some inference. We need to sort of think, well, um, hang on a minute. Let, let, let's think about this, right? So. Um, for archaeology to be there and it's well developed must mean that there was stuff there before. These are the lots of Neolithic sites in the country probably have Neolithic sites below them. Uh, start again. That's lots it. of Neolithic sites across the country must have Mesolithic sites below them. And mm -hmm. Also, the other thing as well is if we're too afraid to destroy the Mesolithic archaeology, which is going to be very precious, right? we do so at the peril of not knowing that there might be Paleolithic evidence underneath it. Actually, Paleolithic sites underneath Mesolithic sites that we haven't been able to get to because it means destroying the de delicate Mesolithic archaeology. Think about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Think about it. So, so, we're, we're, so in other words, lots of the new techniques coming allow us to read through the layers without destroying the layers. Which, which is going to be the next landmark of breakthrough in archaeology, which is which is happening now, right? So we've got three D resonance um, technology where we're able to um, resonate pulses into the ground, and we're able to get three D imagery um, of what's below the surface, and and so on. Anyway, that's another thing. So the archaeological excavation also revealed fragments of worked bone. Um, and thousands of flints. So you're talking about a very small area and thousands of flints. Oh my God. That, so there's a lot. And okay, do you know what we said earlier on? We said about, um, what was it we said? Right, we said about Margaret. I shot Margaret down because I was actually shooting myself down. I said, look, Margaret, um, we've got small populations. Um, and then I said, well, why couldn't we have had bigger populations? Right. Why do we have to restrict ourselves to something that I've been telling you for, for years? Right. Um, why can't we have? And obviously what, what we do, we, we are restricted as well by by trying to put everything in one timeline. Right. So we, we see lots of flint right from the Mesolithic period. And we think, oh, my God, does that mean to say that people were living there? Loads of people were living there. Well, people may have lived there for a long period of time. So we've. We, we've got to really think logically about this. So the archaeological excavation yielded work bone, the, the flints, as we said, um, given an idea of a highly advanced 
people. And the flint assemblage recovered from the same, same layer is currently being quantified and analyzed. So to quantify the archeology, span what you do is you say, right, how, how big is the archeology span in the area? Can we, can we say that the Neolithic evidence goes over there and over there and over there? So you take an area, right? And then what you do, you, you, you work out how big this excavation is. And it looks like it's something like um, three by six meters long or whatever. Um, anyway, so you say, right, so if this, and, and then you work out how many flints you might find across the site, giving you an idea of the activity. Whew. So, so the new dates are, uh, are earlier than we could have ever believed from this island. Um, and they're the earliest recovered archeological evidence from these islands there in the Inner Hebrides. Um, and and what, what we're thinking is that, what we're thinking, and this is the University of Highlands and Ireland talking now, a certain chap called Dan Lee from the Archaeological, Archaeological Institute, University of Highlands and Islands. Uh, we are really pleased to have such convincing Mesolithic dates from the site. This hints at the huge potential for additional excavations in the area and presents a great opportunity to understand life in, in <clears throat> staffing during this period. And I will add that we don't rightly understand. We don't, we don't. So confirming that people are living in this area 9,000 years ago is a huge bonus to all who took part and we eagerly await the next phase of research. So what we've got, we've got vague, vague evidence of, of settlement, um, which, which is not vague at all. We've got, we got clear evidence of settlement. Um, we've got eating habits. We've got hearths. Uh, we've got lots of stuff going on. We've, we've got lots of flints and so on. And you also got to think, you've also got to ask yourself a question. If all these flints are all gathered in one area, what the hell's going on? Are they, are they, are they trading flints there? Are they napping flints there? Is it a flint waste tip? Um, what's going on? Why are there loads of flints there? Are they special flints? Did somebody have OCD and they decided to collect all the flints together? They may have done that, right? And this is, this is one thing that I'm saying in the past. Uh, we, 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 um, well, one thing that we do, we put our modern parallels on the past, but then we say, oh, no, they didn't do that. Like, like OCD, right? Um, see, I've got OCD, as, as, some, as most of you know, and um, so the fact of the matter is um, there are certain things people with OCD have got to do, right? So, and you think, well, they couldn't have had OCD in the past. Well, why not? Why, why couldn't the people have had obsessions? Uh, people did have ob obsessions in the past. Um, they, 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 they butchered all our animals in one place, or they, they decided to live at a place, and, and, and they decided mm. to uh, dump things in rivers, and they decided to build burial chambers and, and do this. These are all obsessional mm. activities, not necessarily ritual activities. So the work is being funded by... Um, and this is uh, this is quite shocking. The next fig the next thing, it, it's being funded by um, by the Highlands Council and sort of various other organisations like the Carnegie Foundation. But this is interesting. Um, Scottish fund uh, the 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 um, the, the, um, uh, the Staffing Bay project and the University of Islands uh, to discuss how further work can be carried out. Um, and this. There were there were over 200 participants in this project, 200, and I think that's quite amazing. Uh, pu school uh, pupils were involved, um, student archaeologists, professional archaeologists, um, various visitors. Um, and for such a small excavation, it's basically inspiring that people are so interested in in these areas of our past. Um, and 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 what we've got to do is shout out. That history has so many different aspects, rather than just uh, looking at, say, um, the the Iron Age or just looking at the Roman period. There's so much out there to study. So, what what I what I want to do is, I want us to um, sort of understand that what what we're going to next look at. And there, there they are excavating away and get an idea of the soil and obviously excavating up the site. 
Um, and these um, are some of the objects from the the landward site called An um, Corran, uh, which which is Staffing Bay. Um, and uh, the, these are some of the um, objects that have actually been found. And you see that little object up there, right on the right in the right hand corner. I found something like that in a field not so long ago. Um, and I brought, I, I gave it to a woman that I was dating at the time, and I wish I'd kept it um, because that may have been a Mesolithic object. Anyway, it was random in a field, but there you go. So what what we're going to do is um, I'm going to introduce um, this sort of uh, scientific paper that I've got here, and it's it and maybe what I might do is is sort of show you from the screen maybe uh, what we've got um, if 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 this will permit me. Um, so it's basically Corin Staffing Sky, um, and this site this site is is as revolutionary as what they've been found in on Staffing Island. It's just that little bit of a spit that overlooks um, Staffing Island. So that's what we're going to do. And a work that was undertaken in 2012. And also, guess who should be involved in this project? Nikki Milner. Where have I heard that name before, Andy? Star is it that woman who's is it that woman who's been excavating a star car for the last hundred years? <laughs> So, so yeah, so, so I want us to, I want us to look at what I've got here. Um, and there's some great stuff. And it says, it says about, I haven't mentioned what this is about, have I? But we're going to do it. The An Corran, A-N, next word Corran, C-O-R-R-A-N, rock shelter on the northeast coast of the Trotanish Peninsula sky contained a series of shell middens, other deposits with evidence for human occupation from the Mesolithic periods and later. So obviously a rescue investigation of the site in the, in the winter of 1993-94, immediately prior to the anticipation, anticipated total destruction by rock blasting for roadworks, included the excavation of a trench um, dug down to bedrock a total of 41 individual identifiable um, pieces of archaeology that they came across from later prehistory to earlier prehistory, from hearths to archaeological evidence going all the way into the Iron Age. So the lowest 10 layers were identified initially as Mesolithic on the basis of bone, tool and flint typology. A series of 18 radiocarbon dates indicates they contain the residues of other evidence as well and middens and all sorts of different things microliths um early or oh, and early mesolithic activity so how early is this mesolithic activity and above it you've got neolithic activity human bones and so on um and what they what they found as well is they believe that it's a rock shelter um, rock shelter they're living in sort of rock shelters was located below an outcrop of baked mudstone and near a source of chalcedony now we don't mention chalcedony much um chalcedony um is a material that was was used if you couldn't get all the chert or you couldn't get all the, all the flint both these lithic raw materials were widely used during the mesolithic as far away as the island of Rum. So you're thinking about material from this site was traded wide for wide area. We don't <laughs> often get chalcedony. So it's, we don't need chalcedony silica. It's just, just basically like, um, it, it's basically, a, it, it's, a, it's a quartz looking material. It, it, it's softer than shirt, but it can be made into uh, flints and various other things. When you think about micro, microliths, uh, you think mainly about uh, you think mainly about um, it, it being flint, but it's not. So um, it, it, it can be various other objects as well. So so what we're going to show you, well, do I show you this on the? I, I think I'm. Yeah, we'll 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 go off this screen share. Um, and obviously, um, 
associated with the sky excavations. They got that toggle. We, we mentioned that toggle before. This is where this came from. Um, and obviously the extended excavations where this site there, that, that's what we're looking at there. So I, I, I got this in front of me, which I'm reading out, but obviously um, I got to try and show you some images from what I've got here, but I can't, I can't get it on here. It's locked me out uh, because I've got access via my phone. So, um, so I've got to basically do the copyright thing. Any images that um, now are shown belong to the um, Scottish, um, um, the Scottish antiquaries and apologies um, uh, for their use, but to obviously advance um, our scientific knowledge and all credits to um, the um, Scottish antiquaries, uh, which I'm a fellow for. So if we want to show this now, I have to do that. Um, I won't just do that now. Stop sharing. Right, okay. So we're gonna try and show this from here. It's not showing, um, oh, there, hang on, where's it showing? Hang on a minute. I know how to deal with this. There's a way. Hang on, I've got a torch on you. How do I get the torch? Right, if we do this now. How should work? Hang on. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Right. Right. There we go. You can see there, there's the little island at the top and there's the little site there. So it's a square that we're excavating and it was very close to the sea and it was eroded away. So that's what, that's what we're looking at. And, um, and what they've got, and I do believe, if, if I show you this now, if I can, if I, hang on, I think I can get this next image. So if we go to, um, if I type in the right thing on here, hang on a minute. So if I do that there, so hang on a minute. If I type in rock mm. shelter, should get it. Because there's not many Mesolithic rock shelters in Britain. So this is very rare. And we, if we can see this image, then we can get into the text and we will have a little bit of a break. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So there we go. Come on. Uh, give me the rock shelter, please. Give me the rock shelter. Show me the rock shelter. Oh, boulder dash. It's your fault, Pete. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't find this image. Oh, why is this? We, we, hang on, just see if I can get this again. You should apologise again, Pete. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay, Pete. We, we can't always be like this. But hang on, I can give you an idea of the coast, and I might be able to show you... Not, it's not what I'm looking at. Hang on, is that? Hang on. Is that it? Hang on. Hang on. That might be it. Is that it? Hang on. Visit that. I'm just going to double check. This is the one I'm looking at. Is this? Is this the image? I want to get this right. Scarf. 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 Oh, hang on. Oh my God! Look at all these images. Oh wow. Oh, this is by accident. These look good, don't they? I know we can't see them. <laughs> I got, I got what I wanted. Wait! Oh, you can't see them. All oh, right, that's okay then. Uh, this is this is the site we're really looking at. I'm excited now. Right, okay. It, it's simple things. Simple things excite simple brains, Pete. I just pressed the wrong button and I got it. Love it. It doesn't usually work with women, Pete, when you press the wrong buttons. Oh. That, there's the rock shelter there on the left, right? So if we, so what we do, we've got all these beautiful objects that they've been finding. Um, and there, this is about rum. So that would, that's like Chalcodomy, right? But it's not, it's Chert from another site. And that is the one, this is what we're talking about. So they've excavated there, 
right there um, on the left there. And then I get very excited. And I say that um, you can see the soil there, can't you, where they've been excavating. Now, um, you, this, is, this is basically on, along the shoreline. And you can see the problem that archaeologists are up, up against, that they, they've got a rock shelter like this. And rock shelters in a British context are very, very rare. That's why we get excited about it. So the archaeological site referred to here as Anne Corran Rock Shelter is situated, um, as we know, north uh, eastern peninsula of Skye. Now, this itself is a basaltic rock, a lava, um, lava um, basaltic lava rock that was laid down in the Jurassic period over 165 million years ago. And guess what that links us in directly into the dinosaur footprint, because that dates from the Jurassic period. Yeah. Just made that link. There you go. So this, um, so what, what we've got is, is that we, we continue to see archaeological evidence at this location. Um, and at this site, the, cli the cliffs give way to a broad bay, which, which is full of archaeology. And and the site itself um, lies at what is technically a headland. And it's basically, it is a, it is a rock shelter. So it's, it's amazing. And then there's a ledge, which is today 10 minutes above, above the mean high level. So the mean high level, the average high level. So the water level can go above that. Um, and the, what there is, it, it's a rock shelter. Which, which is quite amazing, quite fascinating. So what we're going to do, um, we're, we're going to examine this rock shelter and give you a little, few little bits of information. And there's also, there's also nearby a freshwater spring. So you've got a rock shelter that they've got access to a freshwater spring. I can't make this up. This is just so bizarre, this, this, this article. But this is an academic article. It's a great one. Um, and just a couple of other things, a cave which has got access, well, a rock shelter has got access to fresh water. I think that's great. Um, so, so what we've got is that we've got these objects um, and it's, it's got this nice little article. And it's talking about, it's talking about Mesolithic middens, the Neolithic period. Um, and here we go. It's talking about middens, example, and Corran. The midden at sand appears to be solely Mesolithic. Um, so we've got. Me so what? What we're saying? What we're saying with that? And, and maybe, maybe after the break, we could read a little bit about this out. Um, and what we're saying there is that we've, in some areas, we've got just Mesolithic activity. In other areas, we've got Mesolithic and Neolithic and Bronze Age and other activity. I've, I've, I've just naturally only just come across this. Um, and this is from a site known as Sand. Um, a, 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 a scallop that they're saying has been cut. Um, so this is this is a little new one. Do you know what I might do is, do you know what? It would be really good to give this justice next week, this site. Because I've only just really come across it now by complete accident. So we'll, we'll keep this image here because it seems a shame to sort of puddle pit over that one. So we're going to, I want us to finish at, um, I, 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 want, I want us to finish at, uh, um, what was I going to bloody say? Uh, at, at just around half past. So um, we're just going to, because I made up for it last week. Shut up. It was Pete's fault. He didn't stop talking. Right, so okay, I want a cup of tea as well. So um, it's half past nine now. So Margaret, anything you want to say, darling? Uh, did you say they found stone tools there? Yes. Were they made from that basaltic uh, material? Uh, they well, they were made from the, the uh, silicate chalcedony. Yes, some of them. So, and that's it's been tra that that's been traded all the way over to rum as well. But you get other microliths as well that they're talking about in this in this article here. So and back then, were all those islands connected? Was it just very shallow water between them all? Uh, the outer Hebrides, uh, the inner Hebrides would have been linked to the land, but the outer Hebrides was probably yeah. um, 
more or less, you know, but probably very early on in the Mesolithic, maybe um, some of it could have been linked the Outer Hebrides, but let's not let's not go there. So I wonder it, if the animals would have been able to wander freely from one place to another. Yeah. I yeah, know these it's, days they swim the cattle across, don't they, from some of the islands. Yes, they do. They still do that. Yeah. But mind you, they have a good old wash at the same time. Have you seen the back ends of some of these animals? Yes. <laughs> Not very pretty. Yeah. Would, I, the I, sea, I, I, would the sea level be that level? No. The, the sea level. The, 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 at this point, you could still get over to Ireland. Mm. But but obviously there there's there's pseudo deep water going out to some of those outer islands. So um, you know it's difficult. It's a difficult one. Mm. It's the same as Shetland. People argue that Shetland was part of mainland Britain at one point, but one or two people say no because there's deep some deep waters, deep trenches in between. So mm. uh, so okay. Who else have we got? So Drina, have you done your bit? Yeah. She, I've got a cake. I need my cake. Um, Peter's gone, so we don't do Pete. Uh, what about you, David? Anything you want to say, darling? No, thank you. Uh, what about um, Annie? No comment at this point. <laughs> okay, and you, you, Andy, give us your comments. Um, I was just in, intrigued with the, the on a more general turn about Mesolithic sites that that virtually all the ones I've ever been to and all the ones that seem to be discovering, they're all stuff coming up at the surface flints on the surface and yet the rule of thumb is you know a meter for every thousand years and i think isn't it bizarre you know that we're finding them on the surface yeah at all these sites you know obviously the, the coastal ones are getting eroded so they're being found but i mean the last, the last one i was on on that one on the ribble was just lying on the surface we uh, uh, it, it, right okay we we, we we can answer this one quite simply right oh we need a chart we need my little dude. We can answer this quite simply. It's a really valid question. Well, all, these, all, all of these are valid questions. Right. So obviously, obviously, you've got you've got um, lots of these lots of these sites that we get um, in the Mesolithic period. Um, a relatively um, a relatively now fairly high up. So mm. um, if if you look up Hike. Yeah. Um, if you look at height, even though it's near the coast, yeah, you're it's right. still they're fairly all high up. They're all on yeah. tops of things, yeah. Yeah. So if you think about if you think about where the archaeology is now alongside the sea line, right? Mm. Uh, they they are they right. Okay, this is quite si simple. Spit it out. So you you see them now, they're near the shore, but sea levels risen 10, 15, 20 meters in some of these areas. So they'd be quite high up. Mm. Right. So being that being that we know that the that the upland areas were felled of trees first right that means that any material any soil is being deposited further down yeah it's migrating down isn't it yeah, yeah. that yeah. that means that the soil levels are less uh, up in yeah. these upper areas so mm. when we come to the archaeology seeing them the archaeology isn't that deep, and that makes perfect sense. However, Andy, you've just hit upon another quandary, right? Inland sites, where Mesolithic sites are sort of fairly low-lying, that's mm. going to be covered by deposition material from upper areas. Mm. So we're not going to be able to find the archaeology for a very long time because it's deeply buried. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like but, York. That's Yes. It's got a lot yeah. of position. Yeah. Oh, were yeah. They, were, these, were these islands densely forested? Yes. What? Because they. Mm, oh, okay. Yes. Yes. But when you've got them densely forested, and then the trees have removed, and you've got high winds, yeah, that's also going to massive denude. erosion. Yeah. Mm. So it actually, Thank you. actually, it comes down to the other thing, Andy. We're very lucky to have the archaeology in the first place. Yeah. Good job it's stone and not something more flimsy. Could have blown away. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> right, okay. I think we'll have our break now. I think I'll put I think I'll put better put the camera on off just in case. All right.
See you in a minute. Okay. Yeah, see okay. you in a bit. Well, we'll see you in five minutes. Oh, I can't uncross my legs. They're glued together. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> So what? Have you enjoyed the weather today, David? It's a bit warm. Have you managed to get any sunshine? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's been a lovely day. It has been a bit too warm now, hasn't it? Like I, I've been out shopping and I had to come and sponge myself a bit. I was really over hot. You have to excuse me because I'm topless, as you can see. <laughs> It's been, it has been too warm. Don't you find sitting on a leather chair without a shirt on is uncomfortable? I think I would. <laughs> you know, the fact oh, I'm not, I've actually got a folded blanket on the pot oh, I'm right. actually sitting on, uh, yeah. rather than the red leather chair itself. Yeah, As you say, it's more comfortable that way. Uh, yeah. And there's a cushion behind me. <laughs> so you're insulated properly. Yeah. How was Sandra after a fall? Uh, she, she said she was all right, but today, the last two days, I've been trying to get over her. I can't get an answer, so I'm only assuming she's mm. gone back into hospital again. Oh, oh dear. Hope it's yeah, just she's really suffered. Yeah. I will send her our love when you when you do get to speak to her. Well, yes, I oh yeah, I always do. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. 
It's a really terrible disease, isn't it? And with all the modern medicine, it's still a, they can't really make it any more comfortable, can they, somehow? It's a terrible no. disease. I wonder if it's always been around, you know, you don't, I've not ever heard any historic things where they, you know, you do hear sometimes about medicines that were going on, but cancer isn't something. I think they just died from it. Without... They would have died from it, but I say it's not something, you know, like you, you, you hear you hear regularly of some kind of diseases that were around, say, in the Middle Ages or something. Yeah. Mm. But um, I've not heard of and That's never come up in any kind of literature I've read anyway. Uh, but don't forget, people, average people, didn't live that long anyway. No, they didn't. So, and to um, detect it, you would need X-ray and yeah. sort of modern um, examination systems that we have. They never had that. Because the point is, children can get it. It isn't net. Yeah. It gets yeah. worse without the children can have it. I did yeah. come across something recently where they I have a feeling it was ancient Egypt where they got some. They got one of the mummies they discovered had cancer. Didn't they? Yeah. I was reading. Because I've wondered how long it's been around. Yeah. They knew about um, type one diabetes in Roman times. That's. That was a disease. So you do hear of some of these diseases around um, in different times, but cancer, but you think there was one mentioned then. Yeah, it's something I've never come across. I don't know whether you've looked out the window, Anne, but we've got a spectacular sunset oh, tonight. Yes. Oh, I'm, looking yeah. at yes, I'm, I'm facing it. Stunning, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I've been yeah. watching children all paddling in the water, and it's yeah. quite That's nice this evening, but the sky is gorgeous. <clears throat> <clears throat> and it's all reflected in the water. Yes. You know, the pink yeah. is all reflected in the water, and the water's fairly still at the moment. I love evenings like this when the water's still particularly. I washed all the bedding today. Uh -huh. I made the bed up, but I haven't put the duvet back in the cover. I don't know whether to or not. <laughs> uh. <coughs> the thing is, it's a good idea to put it in just in case, because it could you could have a sudden turn for the cold. Oh, you, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. to do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know there was an article in the Manchester Evening News about Arnside saying what a wonderful place. A hidden gem, just uh, an hour from Manchester, and uh, they were describing it. And they said uh, there's a an amazing variety of wild wildfires. <laughs> wildfires. Wildfires. I think they need <laughs> flowers. No, I, think they do, yeah. I think it was a misprint. <laughs> <laughs> I went out for a picnic yesterday. And it was lovely. We were sitting all amongst the harebells. I think the harebells are lovely. And they, it's, I often miss their season, you know, because I try and keep a... Mm -hmm. I, I walk the dog over the knot every day and then down to the, um, the caravan park and then back along the beach. And it's been so quiet. Mm -hmm. There was hardly a soul to be seen yesterday and this morning. Mm. More or less well, there's, crowds, there's crowds down here most mornings. Yeah. On the, along the front here. There's been quite a lot of people. I'm out fairly fairly early with him, but it is it has been really, really quiet. Right, you, quiet. Might be, you might be out before anybody's up. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I, I just saw one person yesterday 
I no. said you're the first person that I've seen and I've been out for nearly an hour. Well, when I was there, I stopped at Braithwaite Farm, which is just side, outside of uh, Ironside. I don't know if you, you, you know of it at all, but it's within sight of the knot. Yeah. Oh. Which, not what farm? Braithwaite. Braithwaite. No, I don't, I don't think I've not, heard not, not that. Really well, I'm not, I'm mm. terrible at mm. geography. Oh, I don't know that. Braithwaite's quite a Cumbrian name. There's, I know a lot of Braithwaite. All right, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was hoping to get into Arnside to see you all, but my scooter was oh. wrapped out, so I couldn't get couldn't get in at that particular time, so uh, oh, I missed you all. It would have been nice to meet up. And yeah, yeah, it would have been nice. That's what I, my, that was my intention, yeah. Oh, well, you'll have to you come again. Yes, I will. We'll have a meet, we'll have a meet up. Yep. We'll have a meet up with Pete the Meat. Yeah. Are you there? Mm. Are you there? There, 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 there. Right, in my, in my Sapiens book, this is where I got, this is where I got onto the language thing. It goes on about language. That's where I got it from. And it says that we like to gossip. We've always liked to gossip. We're a social animal. It's our mm. key for survival and reproduction. It's not enough to know the whereabouts of lions and bison. It's much more important to know who in their band hates whom, who is sleeping with whom, and who is honest and who is a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing unusual about that. No. It's, it's a, it's a, it sounds a pretty normal. Surprising. It is a bit surprising. You tend to think it would have all been about um, animals and food, wouldn't you? But... Apparently, the most important thing was gossip. Well, obviously, the, the animals and things are important, but they're not as interesting as no. the, uh, the, what's happening when, amongst the local population. Yeah. Was there indoors doing? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Where did I get that from? Her indoors. Who used to say that? Her indoors. Her indoors. Oh, Her yeah, indoors. Arthur Cole. Who? Oh, oh, that's it. Yes. Yeah. Her yeah. <laughs> <Her> indoors. Her <laughs> indoors. Mm. That was that. That was minder, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Ready, Al? Let's crack on with this. Right. Okay. Right. Where are we? Right. It's it's your part. It's your fault, Pete. Yeah, I know. Everything, everything's yours. It was deliberate anyway. What was? <laughs> what was? Whatever. <laughs> you, you, you did it, did you? Oh, look, look at those. Mm. Some chaos. Ah, flakes of the bake stone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there, there we go. Mudstone, yeah. Looks like coal almost, doesn't it? Exactly. Well, right. you know, so what is that? Is that actually flint or? No, it's not. It's not. It, it, it's basically, um, it's a very, well, you, you've got the, you've got the Chalcodernia and, and you've got this mud, these mudstone tools. So the, these are. Uh, be useful. It'd have to be very hard. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, right. Anyway, let's crack on with, with what we were going to do. So, um, my screen so, froze. I can't see anything. Oh, yeah. well, oh. You can hear me, Yo, can you? I can hear you, but I can't see anything. The screen seems to have frozen. I can see three people all drinking, but they're not moving. It's like stills. We can see and hear you normally, though. Pardon? Yep. We can see and hear you quite normally. All right. No. Right, let's crack on. So we've, we've got, the biggest problem is that we've got with this type of archaeology along the coast um, is that it, it, it's in danger. It's a rock shelter, a rock shelter ledge. So they've excavated it. 
So technically, it's become a, basically a sea cave now. <laughs> Um, and they're trying to excavate what they can and what, what they're finding initially, initially what they thought with this archaeology was it only dates to about 7,000 years ago. But we're now starting to get an overall sort of idea that this dates to about uh, 9,000 years. So the implication of what we, we're getting um, is they're starting to see that the, um, the, 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 the sea level um, is, is obviously very different. From, from what it was in the past. Um, the, so during the excavation, they, 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 they found out and they actually went down to the original surface level. Um, and when they went down to the original surface level, they found out obviously a lot of material had fallen down onto the archeology span itself. And, and when the, the, rock sh the rock shelter itself and they, they, they sat, found that there was an association with the rock shelter and actually um, a fresh water source. And, <clears throat> and the fresh water source itself wasn't actually too far away. But obviously what we've got to think about is, is how the geology and how everything has eroded and changed over the years and how this landscape has been changed by other activity. So in 1993, the instability of the, the cliff face adjacent to what they were doing slowly started to reveal that, they, that they've got very uh, important archaeology that they needed to excavate and reveal. So what they needed to do in the archaeological excavation, they, they came up with an archaeological strategy to recover material for dating, which they were, which they were able to do. Um, and it was only a small area that they were excavating. So that, that was pretty that was pretty helpful that they could put all their resources into a very, very sm small area. And so so the excavation, the excavation itself um, was an excavation, <coughs> which was an area of six by six meters in area directly within the rock shelter landscape. Um, large chunks of it have actually been eroded away. And what I'm going to show you, I'm hopefully going to show you this image on the screen. Um, if you can actually see this and you get an idea of the rock shelter and, and if I can sort of scroll through some of these things, I really, hang on a minute. What I could do is if I go, if I sign in, uh, Andy, I'm going to, I'm going to do something stupid now, Andy. I'm going to sign in, I'm going to sign in from here and you'll be able to see some of this stuff. On join meeting, which I did say that I couldn't do and share you them directly, but so I just show you the images. I think I should be okay. All right. So if I if I got this, um, and I'm so if I go out, so this is where it either goes wrong or right. Oh, we're gonna have the feedback thing as well, aren't we? Hmm. Okay, let's let's see how it goes. If there's loads of feedback, then you know how it is. Hang on a minute. Um, go there. I really want to show you these because they're great. Right. Okay. Stop that there. So if we allow the other participant in, which is me. So if I if I'm admitted. So can you still hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. No audio, right? Yeah. It's I'm working. See you twice. I don't care. I don't mind. Right. So what? What we're going to do? If I give, right? Okay. Stop the video. See, you're only seeing me once now, Pete. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it says it, iPhone. It's working. It's working well. Good. Right. And what we're going to do? If I screen share this. Right, if I share my screen, start broadcasting. So if we go with, if we go with this. Are you able to see these images? Yes. Yeah. No. All oh, right, so you've got, you've, you've got all the article now. So basically this is what we're talking about. Hang on. No, it's gone. Good, don't go. I'm like the staffing bee. 
Okay, so I'll just try and keep to some of the images, um, keep away from the text, and we'll keep away from these co copyright issues. So we quickly go through that quickly. Right, okay. So this is what we're talking about. That's the landscape. So we've mm. got Anne Cor in there, opposite staff in Ireland, right? So we've got that. We know where the site is. We've established that. Um, that's the area that they're excavating, right? Mm. So it, it's it's sort of 10 metres above water level, but it's very near the coast. So you've got that sort of erosion problem. And there is where they're putting the road in, right? So obviously... Um, it's not going to be eroded away anymore, but it's got to it's got to go because they've got to put a road in, right? So this is the area they're looking at. You can see where this is all sort of, you know, with, there's been uh, problems uh, with with erosion and so on. Um, and if we sort of go back up there, that's the area that we're talking about. You can see it's so close to the sea. Um, and there is the rock shelter. That's this is how it is there. Okay, so it's just sort of ten meters above sea level. That's the that's mean high water, so the water level can go above that or below. Um, and then what we then have is um, that's the area they excavated um, along this rock face. And um, so if we go to say this is what I mean, they they had to put the road in, so it it helped them excavate a bit deeper. And what they're saying is that um, this is rather interesting that. Um, all this rock face, all this cliff face is gone and have eroded over the last 9,000 years. And that's the excavation. So in this area that, that they've excavated. So, um, so it's a very small area that they're excavating, but they're obviously getting all this information from it. So this is what we're talking about. So they're excavating down, very small team. Um, and this is sort of, this is sort of um, an overview of the archaeology. Um, and this is what they're recording for the, the archaeology that they're finding. Um, and those are the complicated layers. So the, these, this is how complicated the archaeology is with all the different boulders fallen down. So you've obviously got these layers 32. All this is sort of the earlier stuff. This is the Mesolithic stuff over here. And you've obviously got all the other layers of deposition over time. Um, and this more in the one part of the trench than the southern part of the trench. And it's showing all of these things here describe the different types of archaeology that's actually been found in the excavations. And they're, they're saying that they've got burnt deposits there. Um, and this is, this is what we're talking about, all the burnt archaeology. So obviously we've got, um, they're burning within some kind of rock shelter that, that could technically have been some kind of shallow depth of cave. Um, and obviously more of the detail of the burnt deposits, which it would, and, and obviously all the other deposits. So this is, actually, this is actually the Mesolithic world you're looking at. These are the Mesolithic layers. Um, and, and and there's lots of grit and sort of shell in there and so on. And that there was a pin found which was associated with a later layer and, and later levels. So you've got all this. Um, so what, what we're going to do is if I if I go go to the conclusion, um, which which we're gonna do, because we, we don't have a lot of time now. So um hang on. Right, so the, the excavations. So we've said that about the excavations as it's showing. We're not going to read out all this. So we've obviously got the where they're excavating. So it's very, very sort of inclement conditions. Um, and they're talking about um, it's not a big area that they're excavating, 2.5 meters. And all these different um, layers on all these different contexts. Um, sort of from more recent layers all the way down to the Mesolithic layers that are away at the bottom, which is what we've got number 33, 33 there. So we've got all those depths of layers. You can get an idea from the scale um, that the archaeology is about um, th this 32 here. Um, these layers are, are about, if you take that, it's half a meter deep in Mesolithic deposits. So it's a really important area for them to excavate. 
Um, and obviously, obviously assessing this with all different layers. Um, and, you know, this rock platform, the so this is what we're interested in. So the low deposits are mainly formed by a series of human activities. Lots of different evidence um, is talking about the rock platform, including marine and other faunal evidence. Um, and again, we, we showed this chart earlier on, all the, all the differences of charcoal and different burnt layers and so on. Um, and obviously they're excavating. You can see how complicated this is. Um, all the complex layers. So there's a lot going on in this Mesolithic site. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it, we don't usually get this level of preservation um, with these types of sites. We do get them at Boulder Cliff and we do get them at Star Car, but not with, this was a big surprise. Um, and look, look how thick, look how, look how high the layers are there, really half a meter in sort of Mesolithic archeology. span um, The deposition of human remains found there as well. And what one thing that we haven't come across much of Andy, human remains in the Mesolithic period um, and the use of lithic artifacts. Obviously when we're talking about lithic artifacts, we're talking about the, the, the mudstone artifacts. Um, and Anne's just entered the room. I thought she was already with us. Right. So, um, and we got lots of burnt residue associated with the hearths. Um, it's talk, um, sort of the proportion of uh, higher layers. There, are, there was an absence of it discovered in the earlier groups. So, so we, what we've got is, is in some of the lower stuff, uh, you've got burnt residues, but not really hearths, but hearths mixed out throughout. So it's a really mixture of archaeology. Um, and it's talking interestingly enough here, this is rather interesting, within this rock shelter, although there was no apparent major dis discontinuities in the sequence, such as the clean wind-blown lenses, sand blown in within the first group in indicating periodic human absence from the site, there were indications of different economic strategies. So in other words, the, the cave is used for some time, the, the rock shelter is used some time, then it's not used. And then it's talking about then it goes down to say about um, the survival of bone. Um, so it's talking about the lowest layers and the lowest part of, for instance, contained very little shell. And it's likely that the relatively non-calcareous nature of these horizons has prevented the sea. Right. So in the upper layers, you've got bone and, and so on. But in the lower layers, really lower layers, um, you, we, we're struggling because, because of the contamination and all the rest of it. So the rest of the lower context were dominated by shells. So we've got lots of shells in the lower context. And I do believe that's what you're seeing. Those are all bits of shells. So it's full of archeology. span It's such a mixture of archeology span going on at the site, huge mixture, massive. And um, preservation of bone and antler remains in these lower contexts. Amazing, you know, think about antlers. So, um, so the extent, so, so what we've got is the significance and configuration of these contexts. And then it, then it goes on to say that in the upper layers, you've got evidence of Bronze Age and Iron Age evidence within this sort of rock shelter. And to be honest with you, I think that's quite amazing that we, we've got a place that's used for a very long period of time. So in other words, this, this rock shelter, like we see with lots of these other Mesolithic sites, is used um is used for um in the region of um six thousand years that people are using this rock shelter it's not a cave it's, they, we're referring to it as a rock shelter which is sort of more of an overhang rather than a deep cave this is why i said it was like a shallow cave so anyway that that's that from staffing bay so we've got lots of exciting stuff and keep watching out for staffing bay and what i'd like to do next is i'd like to put myself if I want to come back oh yeah so I'm going to um, stop the screen sharing now if we get that there so um, right okay right right okay guys I Okay, right, where am I? Are you, am I still on the screen? Are you there? Yes. 
Right, you can hear me. Good. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm back on the screen here. Yeah? Right, so what yeah. I want us to do is I, I also wanted to mention about Orkney and Shetland as well. So I'm going to quickly do that now. So um, so we, could, we can you can ask questions about Staffing Bay um, after the break. Uh, not after the break, at the end. But I wanted to mention two things. When I went to when I went to Shetland, when I went to Shetland, there was a site called West Vaux. And I remember going to the site of West Vaux. That was also being eroded into the sea. And we went there and that was where the earliest evidence of the Mesolithic period was in Shetland. And um, the dates here almost slip into the Neolithic period, but we've got evidence going um, at West Vaux going back at least um, about 7,000 years ago. So in other words, for us, that's sort of in the Neolithic period, but that's classed as the, the Shetland Mesolithic. Um, so the only the other thing I wanted to mention, so we got that's the earliest that stuff that we've got from uh, from um, Shetland, a site called West Vo. And I'm just going to read out an old reliable thing that I used to read out, used to which when we go to when we look at the stuff on um, when we look at the stuff from Orkney, right? Um, this is the site that we'll be looking a lot at. It's called Ork Orkney Jar. Right. So here we go. Mesolithic. <laughs> in Orkney. So compared to the wealth of material for later periods on Orkney, the evidence for human habitation of Orkney during the Mesolithic period is scant, probably for some of those reasons that I've mentioned on um, the um, where we're looking um, at. Um, I forgot the bloody name of it. Uh, Staffing Island, the Staffing Bay. So the period of the Mesolithic where nomadic hunter gatherers living in small groups and shifting according to the seasons and the availability of food supplies. This along with the fact that they did not leave stone constructions such as Scarabray or Mice Howe means that they have left little trace for the modern archeologist. But we know different, don't we? However, although we know that these wandering hunters crossed from Scotland into Orkney because it was part of the land 11,000 years ago, um, it, it was not clear when until the discovery of a charred hazelnut shell on Orkney in 2007. Um, and this dated, amazingly enough, listen to this, right? We know that people uh, were on Orkney from, from hazelnut shell evidence that they found a place called Tanker Ness. We know that people were on Orkney uh, <coughs> nearly 9,000 years ago. So, and that's how they would have got there. There'd be, you know, the ice map, the ice has melted, the water levels are rising, but they, they get to Orkney. At this time, however, the woodland landscape of Orkney would have been unrecognizable to modern Orcadians. The sea level was considerably lower, up to 30 meters lower for Orkney. So today's green rolling Orkney hills would have been the peaks of high ground. What the Mesolithic hunters would have regarded as lowland areas and now under meters of water. So we've lost all that archeology, span as I said earlier on. A fact that goes some way to explain the lack of archeological evidence on Orkney because it's under the water. However, some of the stuff higher up is still there. What the Mesolithic hunters would have regarded as lowland areas and now under meters of water. A fact, oh, we've done that. Uh, when, whenever they arrived in Orkney, it is doubtful that they settled in one place for any length of time. <coughs> we don't know that though. Uh, their survival depends on hunting and gathering food. Um, so when one supply ran out, moved elsewhere. Maybe that, that could be. We don't know. We, we, don't, we don't know if that, that's true or not, really. Uh, we don't know if that's the case. Uh, not from the other sites anyway. We're seeing that people are living in one place and whatever. Um, so, so here we go. They of so obviously we, we've got an explanation of where all the archaeology is on Orkney and we're tr still trying to find it. Instead, they existed. They may have been more non, not more nomadic people, maybe. We don't know. So they lived off the land, gathering roots, berries and shellfish and hunting birds and animals in a land recently emerging from an icy, uh, icy sleep, but also full of trees. And those trees on Orkney by the Neolithic period were almost gone. But that is another story. Right, that's it for today. Um, any questions, folks? <clears throat>
No. Perhaps the lack of um, bones, maybe they sent the people when they died, maybe they revered the water, seen as they lived near the water always, maybe they buried them at sea, sent them out to sea. Or maybe they just buried them in lowland areas or those places have been eroded into the sea, but that doesn't explain where the bodies are for places like um, uh, Star Car. But then again, not, yeah, Star Car. So we don't really know, that's, that's a big question, but we've got some human remains at the rock shelter at Staffing Bay. Yeah but they haven't been examined yet, as far as I know. Mm. So, um, anyway, uh, is that it from you, Margaret? Yeah. Right. What about you, uh, Peter? No, nothing extra for me. No, it's fine. Good. Enjoyed it. <clears throat> okay. What about you, David? Oh, fine. Thank you. Okay. Right. Anne? We haven't got an image for Anne, have we? Oh. Anne. Oh. Oh, well, she's obviously watching or hearing, I suppose. She's not there, so. Um, right, okay. Um, Drina. On the list of things they discovered, there was something called a lens of shells. What's a lens? Well, I've got to get this myself. Right, we, yeah, we... we, we we didn't spend as much time on that, but okay, uh, lens of shells. Right, okay, which number was that? I don't know. Oh, the thin, lens, thin lens of charcoal, thin layer, thin layer. layer. Oh, thin layer. Okay. Lens, layer, layer. Yeah. layer. <coughs> charcoal lens, a layer or an indication. Lens right. of shells, layers, layers, right. a thin layer. Lens of shells, yeah, an indication of shells. Lens of red brown sand, like a sort of blown in layer, yeah. Yeah. It seemed to be quite oh. an undulating layer, kind of up and down. It wasn't in one particular place, was it? You, no. that, that, that was amazing, wasn't it? Looking at that. You know. Yeah. Right. So, um, Andy. No, no, I haven't done anything to add. Thank you. It was interesting. Mm. Good. Okay, then. Well, more to carry on with with the Mesolithic next week. And um, and I just want to know if there's any other questions from anybody else. Is David still there? Oh, we haven't done David. We know. Right. We're going to say goodbye to David goodbye, now. Goodbye, David. Right. Oh, <laughs> bye, no, everybody. Anyone, David, bye. anything you want to say? Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. bye, bye David. David. Take care, David. We, we know his technique by now. <laughs> So one, any, 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 well, well, like, uh, Anne's and just strange. Technological problems. Yeah, the sun's gone down. That's probably what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she turns into a vampire. Oh, I vampiro. <laughs> <clears throat> the back lane vampire. <laughs> oh, that's just that just sounds too bizarre. No, stop it. <laughs> we have they're finding more and more of these Mesolithic sites all of a sudden, or is it just because we're studying at the moment and we're seeking things out? Actually, I think I think all three. Yeah. Mm. That's that's the way it goes. I, I think all three. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, somebody's just coming to the door, so I'll have to just excuse me. I'll say good night now. Okay. Because bye. I don't get back by. Bye. 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 Good night, Andy. See you, see you next week, Andy. Oh, he's left his bloody thing on. Right, so anyone want to say anything else before we finish? No, that's it. Oh, fine. Very good. Thank you. Very interesting. Right, okay. Um, what what it, time tomorrow, Carol? I won't, be doing, I won't be doing tomorrow now. Okay. So I'll let you know when we're doing it next. Yes, yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, Pete? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give, I'll, I'll phone you up, Pete. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. So, okay then. Um, so if the Margaret, Adrina, Peter, uh, Andy, and Anne, if there's nothing anyone else wants to say, we'll call it a night. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good night, all. Good night. Anyway, thanks for joining Bye. us, guys. Bye. Good night, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thanks, Carl. Bye. 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 Thank you. Night, 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 Anne. So what I'm going to say is that anyone wants to um, 
like or subscribe, uh, please do so. Um, I'm going to look at the chat box. Nobody put anything in the chat today. We don't have any chat. No Claire today. She usually put always puts chat in a box. No Claire. No Claire. No Claire. Anyway, so we've got no no nothing to say else tonight. So anyway, don't 